Different cultural groups modify the natural environment in distinctive ways to produce unique regions. The geographic study of the human environmental relationship is known as cultural ecology. In the early days of cultural ecology, 18th century German geographers adopted the scientific study of social and natural processes. This study concentrated on the physical environment and how it caused social development. This approach was called environmental determinism. Modern geographers reject environmental determinism in favor of possibilism. According to possibilism, the physical environment may limit some human actions, but people have the ability to adjust their environment. Human geographers need some familiarity with the global environmental processes to understand the distribution of human activities, such as where people live and how they earn a living. Important physical processes including climate, vegetation, soil, and landforms. The map that you're looking at right now is the Koppen system. It has five major climactic regions and several subtypes. Plant life covers nearly the entire land surface of the area. Earth's land vegetation includes four major forms of plant communities called biomes. Forest biome, savanna biome, desert biome, and grassland biome. Soil, the material that forms the Earth's surface, can be divided into ten orders. There's nearly 12,000 soil types that have been identified in the United States alone. Few regions have been so thoroughly modified by human beings as the Netherlands. Because more than half of the Netherlands lies below sea level, most of the country today would be underwater if it were not for massive projects to modify the environment by holding back the sea. This is an excellent example of possibilism. Human beings made choices to alter their environment, and their culture has left a stamp in the Netherlands. Sometimes modifying the environment goes wrong. To control flooding in central Florida, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers straightened the course of the Kissimmee River, which had meandered for 160 miles near, the Orlando, near Orlando to Lake Okeechobee. The water was rechanneled into a 90 meter, that's 300 feet wide and 9 meters deep canal running in a straight line for 52 miles. The canal, known as C-38, opened in 1971. Millions of gallons of polluted water, mainly runoff from cattle grazing, began pouring into Lake Okeechobee, which is the major source of fresh water for about half of Florida's population. Now the state wants the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to return the river to, from the canal back to its original course. Diffusion is the process by which a characteristic spreads across space from one place to another over time. The place from which an innovation originates is called a hearth, H-E-A-R-T-H. -E the spread of an idea through physical movement of people from one place to another is termed relocation diffusion. The spread of, of a feature from one place to another is a snowballing process called expansion diffusion. One type of expansion diffusion is hierarchical diffusion. Hierarchical diffusion is the spread of an idea from persons or nodes of authority or power to other persons or places. Contagious diffusion is the rapid, widespread diffusion of a characteristic throughout the population. For example, when somebody texts you something or you get a viral video and watch it repeatedly and send it to your friends. Contagious diffusion. Stimulus diffusion is the spread of an underlying principle, even though a characteristic itself apparently fails to diffuse. In 1492, Christopher Columbus took 37 days, that's 900 hours, to sail across the Atlantic Ocean from the Canary Islands to San Salvador. Charles Lindbergh was the first person to fly nonstop across the Atlantic, taking 33 hours to go from New York to Paris. In 1962, John Glenn was the first American to orbit in space. He crossed above the Atlantic in about a quarter hour and circled the globe three times in five hours. Time, space, compression. Scale is an increasingly important concept in geography because of globalization, which is a force or process that involves the entire world and results in making something worldwide in scope. 
Globalization means that the scale of the world is shrinking, not in size, of course, but in the ability of a person, object, or idea to interact with a person, object, or idea in another place. Globalization of the economy has been led primarily by transnational corporations, sometimes called multinational corporations. McDonald's is an excellent example of a multinational corporation. And also, uh, stimulus diffusion. Mass production from the Ford Assembly Plant applied to food. It gives us fast food. There's many fast food restaurants in the United States, and McDonald's has a global reach. And one point their motto was, one taste worldwide.